What is up guys? This is QRM from the Trinity of Lift and today I'm going to bring all of you guys my Quantum Monarch deck profile for this adjusted 2016 February ban list. Now, it hasn't I haven't made a deck profile in quite some time actually. Like I think it was about what 3 weeks, maybe even longer already that I haven't made my own deck profile yet on the channel and I should apologize for that. I haven't been able to really put deck profiles out first of all because I'm actually really just tr trying to shrink down my collection of cards. And because of that, I don't really have a wide range of decks that I can profile for all of you guys. And also, it has been spring break for this past week for me. And because of that, I really didn't want to play that much Yu-Gi-Oh's um, more than just wanting to just play around with friends and have a good spring break and just have some fun and a, and a good break time from university and speaking of university that's also been a pretty big thing for me too this past few weeks because i've had quite a few exams over the past weeks and whatever so because of that i was pretty busy as well so again i will apologize for just being away from the channel uh, for quite a, some time and without further ado we're just going to jump right into today's deck profile of course, this is Monarch, so we're not going to have an extra deck, but again, the main deck is still pretty cool for this Quantum Monarch build. So, without further ado, we're just going to jump right into the Monarch um, the Monarch lineup. We have three copies of Ether, the Heavenly Monarch, again, because she's probably the best thing to summon on turn one, because she just gets your engine going and sets you up for a turn two play, which is really important in this deck, because you just want to have a constant stream of Monarchs every turn. So again, Ether just accomplishes that perfectly. Moving on, we have three copies of the Erebus because his removal effect is bananas. And just like Ether, he also gets your engine going. So again, we have three of him and three of Ether because they're both like the engine starter monsters that we want to summon. So we have those guys. Then moving on, we have one copy of Mega Chaos. Now, the reason why I felt like I could throw Mega Chaos back into the deck is because previously in Pure Monarchs, I really didn't like Mega Chaos because he can lead you to Brick a little bit more. Because if you only do draw Mega Chaos as a turn one Monarch that you, you're going to try and probably summon... He just makes you have really awkward boards because his effect is mandatory. But in this deck, because of how I feel it's a little bit more consistent in the sense that it's it's a lot better um going first than compared to the right um to the pure monarch build, I feel like I could include the mega case in this list because he is still a very strong blow card whenever you can tribute summon him while using a dark monster as the fodder. And again, just because of just general better consistency in this deck, I felt like I could run one slightly more bricky card to make Make the deck have a little bit more punching power on turn two and beyond so yeah we have the one copy of mega case and then for the last monarch we have one copy of karaz the light monarch now i've never ran this card before in any of my monarch lists but after i started testing one copy i really found that there was a big need for Karaz actually because a few of the decks that are the trap decks of this format like Phantom Knights and Cosmo and whatnot they're all meaning anti-spell fragrance or at least they're at least citing it and this deck really just loses to um it just really loses to anti-spell especially because there is a slightly more heavy heavier reliance on spell cards in this deck when compared to the pure monarch deck and Anti-spell can just really slow down your game to a point where it's just really hard to beat your opponent. So because of that, I felt like Karaz was a pretty good pick in the main deck because he is an out to anti-spell fragrance, as well as he provides a little bit more disruption with your Aether effects, which is pretty cool as well. So we have the one copy of Karaz. Then we're going to move right into our Tribute Fodder engines. We're going to start off with the Quantums. We have two copies of Super Quantum Red Layer and one copy of Super Quantum Blue Layer. Now... I personally would try and bump Red Layer up to 3 because in my opinion, he's just really, really good. Just being a Cyber Dragon that doesn't require your opponent to have a board is really, really strong. But the thing is, I just could not find the room to cut a card for the third copy of Red Layer, which is why for now... I am running the two copies, which in my opinion is probably the minimum that you want to try and run because you need at least two copies of red layer to be able to um, infinitely recycle your blue layer into your hand so that you won't ever have to draw it once you see it the first time with your first e telly. So again, that's a pretty important. And then of course, we only have the one copy of blue layer because again, like I said, we can constantly recycle that blue layer back into our hand with our red layer effect so that we never have to recycle it back to deck so that we don't have the possibility of drawing it again. So yeah, that'll be the it for the entire quantum... Uh, monster engine that we have in our monster lineup moving on to the other monsters i am running two copies of edia and two copies of idol still now 
with the quantums you'll have a lot more tribute fodder for your monarchs but i still feel like eddie and idols are really important in this deck because first of all they're still probably they're still really good tribute fodder but the biggest thing that they bring is that they're gonna help you toolbox your banish pile because i found that when i was testing this deck without eddie and idols you really have a problem with banishing your spells because you don't have any way of getting them back once you banish them with things like the pantheism effect or the prime monarch or your ether effects and because of that i felt like just including two eddie and two idols was good enough to not really overclock my hand with tribute fodder but at the same time gain the benefits of edia and idols with the ability of edia getting back those banished spell cards so again we are running these guys to round off our entire monster lineup now then moving on to the spell cards we have three copies of emergency teleport because this is the card that makes a super quantum dimension go round and you really just need this because it's a one card tribute summon because you can summon that you can activate this special summon the blue layer then tribute that blue layer for the red layer that you will be searching off of that blue layers summon effect again so this really just adds a bit a bigger layer of consistency to this deck because again just having a one card tribute summon is really strong because it um it triggers all of your monarch spells that you have that you want to get live like your field spell or your return of the monarch and in general it's just a, such a great engine in my opinion and i personally feel like this is probably the better monarch variant in my opinion so yeah we have three copies of reasoning then we also have three copies of return of the monarch this card gets infinitely better in this deck because like i said we have emergency teleport to act as a one card tribute summon so because of that if you can establish this um this card turn one with an emergency teleport you can always be able to set up your next turn plays which is again really really important for this deck so again having three copies of return to ensure a search for it off of something like a pantheism effect or in general to, um, to just be able to draw it easier is really really nice so we have three copies of return then for the rest of the monarch spells it's pretty much the same thing as almost every other monarch deck you'll see around we have three copies of pantheism because it's a broken draw card we have three copies of the main because it's a broken field spell we have three copies of stormfort because this card is broken just in general and then we have three copies of tenacity of the monarchs to search out all of our broken spells so yeah that'll be it for the entire monarch spell lineup moving on to our just generic spells it's only going to be three more copies of upstart goblin again because i still feel like you really want to have that 37 card consistency in this deck because you, again you just really want to be able to make your consistent turn one plays and then from there you want to be able to set up your following turn plays consistencies um consistently excuse me so again that's uh, that's why we are running the three copies of um upstart goblin Moving on to the traps, I'm actually running slightly more than just two copies of Prime Monarch. So um, to start off, obviously, we have to have the two copies of Prime Monarch. I still feel three is way too much. Like, I know I see a lot of builds that are topping that are running three, but I, 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 I very much disagree with that. Just because of the fact that drawing into this early is really, really bad unless you have a Pantheism to pitch it out. And in general, I just really don't like drawing into this card. I'd rather search it in the later parts of the game with a Tenacity so that I can go into the grind game when I want it rather than try and draw into it and make it potentially break my hand so again i only have two copies of the prime monarch finally for the last traps i am running in the main deck i decided to run two copies of solemn scolding because for monarchs in general you can make pretty good boards with your field spell plus a tribute summon guy but if your opponent has an out to your field spell or an out to your big guy like a dark hole regeki or a twin twister or something along that lines your board just basically falls apart but with solemn scolding you basically turn your good boards into borderline unbreakable boards because you'll be able to out their out to whatever board that you establish with solemn scolding and they essentially have to out your board twice if you have this card set which is again really really strong because majority of the time your opponent will not be able to draw into two outs at the same time so because of that i just really felt like scolding was just a great card to include in the main deck again because like i said it just turns your boards into just borderline unbreakable boards so again we are maining the two solemn scoldings to round off our entire 40 card main deck Alright guys, that'll be it for this Quantum Monarch deck profile for this February 2016 format. I am hoping to get a few deck profiles from friends and or people at my locals very soon. Again, hopefully, I cannot guarantee it sadly, because again, university life is pretty important and school is the top on my list for now of course so because of that i cannot guarantee anything but i will be definitely trying to get a little bit more content onto the, onto the channel um when compared to these past few weeks so again i hope you all look forward to that and as usual this is qrem from the trinity of lift and i'll see all of you guys later peace out